So what exactly is carving, anyways? You'll hear plenty of definitions of carving out there, but most commonly, people refer to a turn that is created solely by the self-steering effect of the skis when they're tipped up on edge. <laughs> this is how it works. Skis are typically designed with side cut. They're skinnier underfoot and wider towards the tip and the tail. When the ski is tipped over on edge and pressure squishes it against the snow, the ski bends into an arc. You'll notice the skis created a little curved platform, kind of like a luge track. So now, as the skis move forward through the snow, they'll follow this curved path. This works even better on a snowboard. In a carved turn, there's no twisting or skidding of the skis. Notice how the tails of the skis follow the exact same path as the tips, creating a clean set of very narrow tracks in the snow. So what's the point of carving? Well, racers, they often strive to carve the way through a turn as much as possible, mainly because the lack of skidding creates less drag, and then the skier can preserve more of their momentum. So basically, they can go faster. Of course, there's a downside to carving. If you come across a situation where you need to control your speed, or if you want to travel along a path that is tighter than your ski side cut will allow, for example, you want to avoid a tree, then perhaps a pure carved turn isn't ideal. Even for those racers, as courses are typically set with too much offset to allow for pure carving all the time. So many folks perceive carving as the pinnacle of ski technique. This actually bodes really well for us over the hill types, because in reality, carving by this definition is probably the simplest thing you can do on skis. You see, while steering a turn, you have to come up with just the right blend of twisting the ski and tipping the ski up on edge. Whereas with carving, all you have to worry about is the edging part of the equation. So you're in luck. Just stop trying to turn and tip your skis over. 